Hello and welcome to The Sheer Life Show. I'm Charlotte Collins and joining me on the sofa today are Laura Black, Lou Huff, and I'm so excited to be joined by special guest Tonya Buxton, celebrity cook and food writer. Welcome, ladies. Well, later in the show, Tonya will be, making, will be showing us how to make an elevated breakfast from her latest book. Plus, we'll be back with our favourite fashion segment, Style Watch. Uh, stay tuned for all the celebrity outfit inspo you need. But first... Happy 100,000 Instagram followers, Sherlock. Well uh, that is what the balloons are for, in case you hadn't guessed. Uh, we're, I think we're all feeling pretty proud yeah, today. Yeah, very, very exciting. 100, Amazing. Yes, long may it continue. Yeah. Here's, come on, Bella, here's a challenge, 200,000 <laughs> next. Um, okay, first up, we're going to talk about um, the fact that Marie Claire has sadly closed its doors. Um, the print magazine has been going for 31 years, and they announced yesterday that as of October, um, they will continue online but not in print. Um, Marie Claire joins the growing ranks of magazines closing, including Now, Reveal, Glamour, In Style, uh, Look and Bride, who have all closed down, sadly, in the last year or so. Um, Sad, sad news, Lee. Really, really sad. Um, I think it's it's always sad news when something you know that's been going for so long, like thirty one years, you know that, and creating so much amazing content. But I think the way that people are consuming magazines now is changing, and I think you know there will always be a place for the magazine industry. You know, Vogue is absolutely booming. Um, I will always pick up. I, I prefer more of the sort of the quarterlies, <coughs> the biennials, the slightly more like arty. Um, fashion magazines in a slightly more of an editorial perspective um, so yeah there'll always be a place for them but yeah it's sad I think what you're saying it, it's so right I think they will become more like your kind of coffee table yeah. books you buy them perhaps less frequently um, and then you have them on your coffee table and can flick through and that's yeah. definitely how I love to consume magazines now I don't necessarily buy one every single month but no. when I do there's just nothing nicer is there than yeah, sitting and down and really taking your time exactly it's and it's great. something I guess that you don't have to it's only relevant for a week or for a month exactly. it's kind of it's something you can go back to yeah so. yeah Tony do you read magazines I, I, I used to kind of like that was the thing you know go and pick up a magazine every month wait for I used to get them delivered to my house I loved it but my daughters who were in their early 20s I don't think they've ever bought a magazine really do you, so. I still get subscriptions am I the only one <laughs> I, yeah, I used to for, for ages, and then I just stopped because I, I just never had time to look at them. But now the only time I really do it is when I go on holiday, mm. and I've really got some time to just sit down and just go through it. I always go through it backwards. Um, but backwards? Going, yeah, I, I, that. I, get that. I, I don't that really, ruin it? I don't really know why. No, because it's not like you end on like... <laughs> the surprise. <laughs> exactly. The ending. Um, and often the front is obviously all, all of the, um, the advertising. No, you've so got to go yeah. editor's letter and then work. Yeah. Oh, I like I looking at yeah. the advertising yeah, as well. I like, I like well, well. I have a subscription to, to, to Vogue, to Condé Nast Traveller and to GQ, and I read all three of them, like properly read them every month. Because I think, I think the ones that, that are still doing well, still doing thriving, are the ones who really like, know their audience and really yeah. have yeah. something different yeah, yeah. to say. So, yeah, whether it's because they, they are published less frequently or not, yeah. I think as long as they're targeted, that's yeah. when they work. But what do you do about the audiences now that are not buying? As I said, my daughter's early 20s never bought a magazine in their life. Well, yeah. they so come to yeah. 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 Well, that's exactly that's what, what they do. For. That's what they do. <laughs> um, OK, we're going to move on and talk about an article that The Cut wrote recently um, about the influencer. Uh, this is a term. Um, for influencers online or just general people on Instagram who make you want to do the opposite of whatever they're doing or not buy what they're buying. People who are not doing the opposite of influencing you. Does that make sense? Not inspiring you. Not inspiring you, exactly. Or, or quite quite abjectly inspiring you in the other direction. Um, so it doesn't mean that the person who wrote the article was saying that it, she, wasn't, she wasn't so high and mighty as to think that she was kind of impervious to being influenced. It was just that there are certain people on Instagram who, who put her off. Can you relate to this? I yes. can. <laughs> I can. Yes. But also I am follow straight away. I mean, I've, I've learned that the hard way that as soon as somebody's either making me feel bad about myself or what I'm wearing or they're really getting on my nerves, unfollow. It's the only way that I can deal with it now because otherwise I'd be in a bad mood. You know when someone's prancing around getting on your nerves? Mm. Yeah. It kind of makes you in a bad mood. Yeah. But there's yeah. that term hate follow, isn't there, where, where you, you follow people because you like to kind of have a good gossip or you, li you mean, like yeah. how much they irritate yeah. you. That's definitely a thing, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> yeah. I think with the influencer thing, I guess there's kind of, maybe there's certain things where... Um, it's sort of, it, it, there's a couple of people trying it and trying it and trying it and then you suddenly see someone else in it and then you're like, no, it's not for me anymore. You yes, know? I think that's it. It just, it, it accumulates and puts you exactly, off. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Can you relate, Laura? Yeah. Yeah, I, I find 
more than anything, it actually happens to me in the interiors. I feel like you can see so much, so much, so yes. much, and then it becomes a bit like, oh, don't want to see that mm. again. Yeah. Um, fashion also, obviously. Um, but for me, it's more interiors, and I get a bit sick of it. Interesting. Yeah. Is that, can you think of any one thing that you've been put off buying or looking for or it's it's a good thing if you're put off before you bought it but it's the worst if you like I bought the fairy Gucci loafers which I still love yeah but I mean talk about saturated yeah. Yeah. yeah often I find when I really really like something and then it then goes everywhere and then it kind of sort of if, if it was a designer piece it filters down onto the high street <clears> and then it's it, I then go off it because it's I just see it too much but then I have like a bit of a pause and then I realise if I like it then, I don't know, two years later with Welcome those classics. Back, yes. Exactly. Like the Chanel slingbacks that I felt like they were kind of everywhere. The High Street did a version of them. Um, and I was like, okay, no, not now. But now I'm like, yeah, you're back. Yeah, we, have, yeah. we were talking about this yeah. the other day. I have to say, I still feel like I can't get the image of the influencers that I don't want to look like yeah. wearing those shoes yeah. out of my head. So I, I, they are ruined for yeah. me a little bit. No. Tonya, anything that you've been put off buying? No, I'm I, like, look, I'm the old lady here. And so oh, I'm God. quite old school in, in many things. I really do like classics. So no one could put me off them, you know. Yeah. I've, I'm devastated by the fact that the animal prints in fashion now, and it was has been cut, trickling in over the past three years because I was wearing animal print 30 years ago when everyone was thought it was only barmaids wore animal print. <laughs> now everyone's wearing it, and it irritated the hell out of me. <laughs> same with pencil skirts, same with kind of midi things, the things that I would are my staunch classics what annoys me is that they come into fashion and they go out of fashion and suddenly I'm unfashionable but actually yeah. I did it first yeah. that's the difference so yeah things like that do annoy okay. well you've got to hold on to all those pieces yeah. Haven't yeah, you? they do always yeah. come back round um, okay we're going to finish off by talking about food obviously Tonya because we have you here today and um, in ode to our things we love segment we thought we would share with you um, some of the things that we love that are food related right now so Laura you're going to start by telling us about your fabulous pizza oven. So my pizza oven, I mean, I can't, I literally can't give it enough love. Um, Can I just ask, did you, did you buy it or did somebody buy it for no, you? No, so my husband bought it. So okay. we, went to some, we went to a friend's house and they had the real like wood, wood fired oven. Wonderful. I mean, he was literally all over it. But our lifestyle just doesn't really work for that because we just don't have the time to heat up. Anyway, he did some research. He found this portable one that you can plug into a gas bottle um so literally we go home you turn it on you let you, you it heats up really quick it? yeah is it like barbecue size or it's like sort of half the table size okay. it goes on legs but the legs fold underneath so it's so easy to store um and it heats up so quickly we've become serious pros at what's good and what's not okay so, so tell us so we've yeah. refined so there's a company called the pizza dough company uh -huh. you buy it frozen amazing okay so you don't make the dough from scratch uh, well you can. we want to get there haven't quite <laughs> yeah. yet okay it's um, steps. yeah baby yeah. steps the passata pizza express do an amazing passata Ooh, okay. honestly makes it i'm and mortified you're buying pizza. i'm sorry I'm, I'm, I'm like, <laughs> um and then and then it's just all about the toppings and we've had so many friends around and we just sort of lay out all the the toppings yeah. everyone helps themselves everyone oh. makes their own pizza and they cook in literally two minutes and can you you have to make one at a time it is one at a okay. time so yeah it's probably more sort of make them cut them up people help themselves yeah. rather than all sit down Got at it. the same time okay. and eat but honestly it's been money so well spent for oh, us this summer fun. and do the kids love it absolutely love it pizza making on a sunday afternoon yeah and, it's and does it make it makes that like char grilled oven it's uh, it's so so good i think a picture will come up but it yes. is really they're really impressive obviously a proper wood fired one would probably taste yeah. better okay. but you know that takes hours and hours. most of us don't have space for all the yeah, oven. yeah and, and we will yeah, do it on a monday it. night you know we'll just yeah cook yeah. it doesn't yeah. dream and the and the pizza the picture that you bought to show us what what's the toppings on that oh i can't remember okay any but favorite all combos? about yeah my rocket on top yeah. that we love is rocket. the key yeah, yeah it's so good great okay uh tonya okay so i want to talk about hyphalenic olive oil Okay. It's going to, and it sounds hyphalenic <laughs> olive oil, alpha-alenic olive oil. I mean, that's what they call it. It sounds really kind of chemical, doesn't it? Um, I'll, I'll, I'm going to give you it to pass around and taste a bit. Okay. Um, and the thing is, it's going to be the new wonder food that everyone is talking about because it's only just come into fruition in the sense that they've only just made the machine that can extract the oil in this way. And normally when you harvest an olive oil, you take it in um, December, January, when it's really fat and pul pulpy. Um, this is early harvest. These olives are taking off the tree in January, no, in August, mm -hmm. sorry. And so they're quite hard. They're really, really bitter. And you get much less yield. So it's an expensive olive oil. If you're super rich, put it on your food, use it on everything. But if you're not, then I'd say 
try it medicinally. Because the things it'll do for you, it's anti-aging, anti-inflammatory, antibacterial, anti-carcinogenic. Um, I'll let <laughs> That's you- That's what I need today. Take, um, yeah. Have a little teaspoon and, and pass Thank it on. You. If I give you the teaspoons rather than spill it. And what's the, what is the flavor yeah, like? What, how would you describe it? It's a it? very peppery, um, you know, if you oh, take enough, it should make you cough. Um, because it won't, oh, really nice. once it goes down and hits the back of your throat, it, it should. Oh yeah, it's oh, got girls, a little. Oh, girls, take a bit more. <laughs> so you're not feeling well. It's got well. quite um, like a like a, a spicy tickle. tickle. Thank you. Absolutely. And they're doing using this in studies now. Mm, nice. It's very olivey. Yeah. Very olivey. Mm, that have dementia, like have Alzheimer's. They're using it now on studies that, with uh, mm. children with autism because okay. a lot of autism comes from uh, bad gut biome and this just sorts out your gut biome so it is going to be the new wonder food because actually a lot of olive oils are a huge con and unless you buy an olive oil that says on it a uh, single harvest cold pressed and it's in a dark bottle or a tin mm. it's just rubbish really? it doesn't matter how expensive or how fancy that the, the writing and all the blob that goes in, yeah. in it i was in a big supermarket recently looking at olive oils and i was saying rubbish 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 why, why? Not? because it's yeah. often because as soon as uh, olive oil is given light it acidifies and so it becomes actually not good for you actually bad for you Ooh, that's like it becomes rancid. So, you know, there's so much about <coughs> olive oil, about wow. the good nutrients and how, how amazing it is for yeah. you. But on the other side, the bad stuff's really bad for you. Okay. So we've got, um, the one that we've got comes in a very dark bottle, we'll have put it, I've, have put it into a glass bottle. So no, it's no. away. Oh my God. Away. Absolutely. Throw. That's why you go into restaurants. I mean, I'm always, I'm stomping about because I do a lot of travel writing and, and kind of traveling and for food stuff. And I stomp into you know, these restaurants, especially the hoity-toity ones, go, this is now poison, take it off the table, <laughs> I won't touch it. Because it, it, it becomes bad poison, you? yeah, it does. Wow. Okay, fascinating. What does it do? It just makes it... It, it, it becomes rancid, and so it becomes acidic to your system. Acidic, okay, so it, it. it causes inflammation, not what olive oil should do, yeah. which is anti-inflammatory. Yeah. Oh, I'm doing it all wrong. Yeah, me too. <laughs> okay, well, I feel like we need, like, a long... Okay, yeah, this is like a hard <laughs> yeah, segment. Like um, okay, we're going to move on. I'm going to talk about... Oh, my mind's so lightweight compared to that. But <laughs> I'm going to talk about a new granola I discovered. This is maybe... This is just me, but I find I get in a breakfast rut all the time. So I was in, um, I've got a new local Planet Organic, which I'm very happy about. Um, I was in there this weekend and um, was was trialing new canolas, and this one caught my eye. It's not, I hope you approve, Tonya. It's vegan, gluten free, and no added sugar. Um, it's full of nuts and goodness, and I've just been having it with Greek yogurt, a bit of honey, and yeah. some banana. And mm. I really recommend it. And it's also, you know how sometimes these are hideously expensive, and it's not horrible for a nice, healthy one, and it's gone quite far. This has been two of us for breakfast like five days in a row. So, nice. yes, very happy. Right, Lou, you've got some um, chocolate to end yeah, on. Yeah, um, continuing on the sort of non-healthy front. Um, Chocolate's very healthy. I, well... well not this one. <laughs> I'm not sure. um, I have been so excited to be able... We haven't done a Things We Love on the show for ages, and I've been so excited to have it just so I can talk about the chocolate. So it's called Tony's Tony Chocolonies, and I think they're from Amsterdam. Um, and not only does it taste completely delicious, but their mission is to end slavery in the chocolate industry. Um, so they're kind of raising awareness and doing as much as they can. They really focus on who is creating um, their chocolate and the farms and the process. Um, so that's amazing, but the taste is is it, is it milky or is it dark? This is milky. <coughs> this is milk chocolate caramel sea salt, which sea salt, I'm not normally into caramel oh, sea salt. Oh, I love caramel sea salt. Oh, I'm really yeah. into. They do some most amazing flavors. There's a pretzel one, Ooh. which is just kind of a bit salty. I'm a bit irritated that you've waited this long to bring it in. I know, okay. I'm so sorry. Um, and it's just about kind of feels like, turn it around, old school, like Willy Wonka chocolate. Yeah, and where's exactly yeah. the packaging? Where can you find it? Lee? So you, you like? can get it from um, Sainsbury's, Ocado. Oh, right. um, those are the two places I've. Waitrose. Waitrose. Yeah, it's chunky. It's really chunky. It, and the it, way you can break it, it's yeah. not sort of an equal size. It doesn't come in like in, in lines. So it's kind of, you know, okay. when you're having, you're having a big bar of chocolate and you're Thank like, you. okay, I'll just finish mm. one more line. Oh, I see. Yeah, you, you could very easily eat quite a lot of this. Oh. Yeah. I'll just take this giant section. Oh, wow. I can't, oh. I can't miss okay. it. Okay. Isn't that amazing? Mm. Okay. It's like, like well, the well. chunks of the caramel. Yeah. Mm. Great. It's so salty. Okay. Well, I can't do my outro and eat it at the same time, so I'm going to do this quickly so I can try mine. Um, thanks, guys. After the break, we are going to be doing Style Watch, looking at the best fashion that's caught our eye this week. Don't go away.
Welcome back to Style Watch, the segment where we look at the best celebrity and influencer fashion of the week. I feel like I've still got a load of chocolate in my mouth. That was so good, Lou. Wow. Um, okay, the first person that we're going to have a look at today is Kate Middleton, who stepped out wearing Amelia Wickstead earlier this week. Classic Amelia Wickstead. Oh my this God. Dress. I am obsessed with the new Amelia Wickstead collection. This, those florals are so amazing and the shapes. Silhouettes, obviously, she always nails it, but this one in particular, love. So gorgeous. Uh, Laura, wallpaper fashion, back in style. I just love it. She's nailed it again. Um, I perhaps... The wedge, I, I think it would also look nice with a chunky heel. Yes, um, or a trainer. Or a trainer, um, but yeah, she absolutely nailed it. She looked so kind of appropriate for the yes. occasion. Yeah. I think, was it with you, we were having a conversation the other day saying we wish she just sized up on every outfit. Yes. Like, yes. I think this could benefit from being yes. just a little bit bigger yeah. on, so as not to be quite so fitted on top, but um, I agree. Gorgeous print. Nailed it. Nailed it, always. Um, okay, next up, Olivia Palermo, who we don't see quite so much of these days. She doesn't make these best dress lists um, quite as often as she used to, so we thought we'd give her a bit of extra love today, looking gorgeous um, at the Carolina Herrera show in New York at Fashion Week last week. She was like always my my like go to mm. of like when the kind of street star was really coming to the forefront. Of, like, you know, she always just looked so polished, and that outfit was always so considered and classic. And I love this. She's kind of got that. PVC esque. Mm -hmm. We're trying to work out whether it's culottes or if it's a skirt. Cooler if I think if it's culottes. Yeah, definitely. Um, but it's kind of monochrome, very classic, but it's just, it's cool, isn't it? And I love those knee high boots she's got on. Yeah, me too. Laura, is this a look you'd replicate? Absolutely monochrome. Yeah, love it. obviously. But yeah. Also, I think that people, okay, if you if you don't want to do the PVC, you could do it with leather mm -hmm. or or just black, and it, it's kind of wearable for loads of people to take yeah. something from it. Definitely. She's still my, like, yeah. one. She's, yeah. She will always be my, my. if you ever want inspo. We're talking about looking polished all the time. Like, exactly. My yeah, yeah. No one yeah. ever yeah. looks Next level. as that. Um, well, we, if you do want to get the look, um, and other stories has a similar pair of leather culottes, if they are culottes, um, and also um, a similar blouse is available at H&M, so you can get the look. Um, okay, next up, Lisa Aiken, who is a style director, fashion director, at Moda Operandi, uh, was also spotted out and about wearing, uh, at New York Fashion Week, wearing um, an anaquan and that Bottega belt that is everywhere. Lou, mm -hmm. you don't like the belt. I don't love the belt, I'm afraid. Mm. I can, like, uh, appreciate it from a five, but I just think it would look better without it, to be honest, or just with something a bit... I just don't like the bit hanging down. It reminds me of a horse's tail. Oh, yeah, I quite <laughs> like that. It's quite like Emma's, like, yeah. old-school horsey back in the day. Um, Laura, what do you think I, about that? I think she looks great. I think really... So perfect for this time of year, where it's kind of really muggy, but also getting a bit more chilly in the mm -hmm. morning. I think she looks, I think she looks brilliant. Yeah, she looks amazing. Work. Yeah, I have to say, I don't love this. Why? I, I don't like the, the ankle strap with the length of, of the shorts. I don't think it's, I don't think that's very flattering. I think that with a pair of mules, it would have looked a little bit better. Oh, personally. I think she looks fabulous. But she always, she always looks fabulous. But that's that's the tweak I would make yeah, if mm -hmm. it was if it was me. Um, anyway, you can get the look. Well, unfortunately, we have yet to find a high street jeep for the belts, but it will come. <laughs> it will Give come. us time, it will come. Um, but at the moment, it will set you back six hundred and eighty-five pounds. Mm. So. Um, Start saving. Um, okay, next up, Tammy McPherson, who is a blogger and editor, um, went to the coach show wearing this gorgeous dress. Oh, absolutely amazing. The whole coach show, actually, I thought was incredible. Mm. Um, lots of influences there. Um, lots of clogs, which I'm yes. quite excited about. Yeah. Like, everywhere. Georgie, Georgie won't yeah, be Yeah, I was going to say, I'm not that no, excited but about that. But <laughs> yeah, not you, not for you either, but <laughs> no, I'm I think excited. Cool. <laughs> um, but yeah, amazing dress. Um, it's kind of got that that kind of beautiful boho print to it, but still feels quite sort of contemporary mm -hmm. and modern and cool. Yeah. Laura, into Yeah, her. she just looks super cool and relaxed. It just, with the kind of western-y boots as well, she just, she just looks cool. Yeah. And a white boot makes anything look cooler, doesn't yeah. it? As, as you are so I clearly demonstrating to today. <laughs> um, but yeah, it really, I think the white boot, if those were black, it would maybe be a bit less exciting. Yeah. yeah. Outfit, wouldn't it? Um, okay, look number five is obviously Monique. Have we ever done one of these without putting no. Monique in there? She's always nailing it, Monique. Always nailing it. Um, she is wearing a pleated shirt dress uh, by Pallone. Is that how you say that yeah. brand? Um, it's yeah. a kind of taupe colour um, and a dark purple vinyl trench also by the brand. V vinyl trenches. Vinyl. Yeah. Vinyl is back. Like ma the Matrix is gonna, it's gonna come out, isn't That's it? That's true. Um, I think you know, even look, looking at Olivia Palermo's outfit, I feel like there's a lot of um, shirts, trousers, shorts, skirts, dresses, um, long, these like long max as well. Mm. I feel like. Yeah, it's having a comeback. Why is it working? Why does she not look like somebody out of the Matrix, Laura? I think mm. it, she's just so, she's gone really simple, hasn't mm. she? It's kind of clean, 
lines and the colour combination, I think, works so well. Yes, um, yes. She just looks amazing. I think the fact that it's dark purple, I think yeah. maybe if it were black, it would be a bit, yes. a bit too, um, yeah. I don't know what his name is, Keanu Reeves. Um, and also with a little mule and a little bag. I mean, it's so throwback, isn't it? I know, but also I think with the mules and like her anklet, I think just showing that little bit of her ankle just give, kind of gives it that like little feminine touch to it. Mm -hmm. And it, you know, it is quite oversized, but I think just adding that. And I think of, that much of the skin as well, it's kind of balancing it out with yeah. the kind of heaviness of the... Yes. yes, I agree. Um, Pallone's as well, not a brand that I was familiar with, but great no. to see that it's a, it's a decent price point as yeah, well. Yeah, really great nice. Um, okay, finally, we're going to look at the Downton Abbey cast who are out in force for the premiere of the movie. I don't care, do you? Not, oh, I was I'm never quite excited Downton. for the movie. Did, well, did mm. you watch the series? Yeah, loved oh, it. I never watched it, did you? Mm. No, I've wa I watched like a few. Um, I never got into the storyline, but mm. it's just kind of one of those like Sunday night, like, ooh, it's winter. Yeah, yeah, tea in Downton. Yeah. Loved, loved it. It's um, very easy. So the three main women, Elizabeth McGovern, uh, Michelle Dockery and Laura Carmichael, uh, all stepped out looking very glam. So, so glamorous. I think they all look amazing. So we've got... Um, Elizabeth in Zach Posen, um, Michelle Dockery in Galvan, which is one of my absolute favourite designers, and then Laura Carmichael in Mons. I just think they've just got that Hollywood glamour. And for mm. them, I guess, for kind of transforming their look from their, not everyday yeah. uniform, but, you know, what they're wearing on, on set, set screen, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, must be incredible. Yeah, I agree. Um, Laura, what do you think we can take from this in terms of evening wear trends, things to look out for? What's what I think they've nailed here is kind of, the balance of skin on show. Mm -hmm. So where the leg is on show, she's gone high neck, and where where she's got more kind of full on with the gold, she's she's showing her sort of her shoulders and her <coughs> yeah. arms. Yes, and I think that's it's kind of don't don't go all out. Yeah, yeah definitely um, asymmetrical. Yes, lines a lot of asymmetrical as well. Mm. Seems mm. to be the theme. Um, okay, well if you are into also, like if you're into the if you're into the bright gold and sequins, you can do that. But there's also black as well to prove that you, black always does look timeless. Yeah, uh, but also like her hair and makeup is very kind of tuzzle and cat and tuzzle towel. Tuzzle. Tuzzle. Sorry, <laughs> um, uh, I can never say these things right. And and casual. So I just think you know thinking about your hair and makeup to balance out your look as well is key. I agree. All right. Well, thanks guys. As usual, everything that we talked about on all the products will be linked in the show notes below. Um, for those looking to update their weekend brunch, we've got a seriously good recipe coming up for you after the break. Hello, hello to you. Thank you very much. Okay, welcome, welcome back. back. Hey Georgie, how are you? I'm well, how are you? Very, very well. How was your summer? Suddenly feels like nothing's changed, doesn't it? Where are we going? We filmed Sophie Conran first. And who is Sophie Conran? My name's Sophie Conran, interior designer, designer, product developer, mom, gardener, cook, yeah. friend, daughter, lots of things. What's your favourite thing in the kitchen? You're my favourite thing in my kitchen. <laughs> that's been copied I by most that. people. In the morning, when the sun comes in, oh, they glow. Sunny. How are you doing? I'm yeah, really well, thank you. What's going on with you? So I'm here bright and early, which is a real first. Normally yeah. I'm a bit late. Yeah. And I'm really excited to do the podcast. Oh. And Maiden and Chelsea called me up and they were like, uh, you know, you'd be an extra on this show. I was like, perfect. I started doing it. Now I'm quite lovely and I'm shouting into the scene and things. And then they were like, well, No, no, you're in? an extra. <laughs> yeah, I know. They were like, stop it. And then I just actually did a scene. And I couldn't believe how much I enjoyed it. I just made the decision not to go to university. What is the beauty? product you can't live without. Spot fader by Dan Logica. What time is it? Party time! Are you having a shitless party? Why are you having a shitless party? Because it's life is made life. for parties. Thank you so much for coming, guys. My building site. Someone said you're really brave to have a party at home. And I was like, well, we're about to rip it down. So I won't be asking you back next year. Put it that way. It's been such a good year. You know, I'm so sorry, but... I'm so excited to be here tonight that I just wanted to say how amazing this company is. And I especially love your online videos, although Charlotte, as much as I love you, that jacket that you wore the other week, I think, I think that might need to uh, go. Having published her fifth recipe book earlier this year, qualified nutritionist, chef, and TV personality, Tonya Buxton knows a thing or two about food. So, Tonya, you were here to show us how to make a recipe from your new book, but we've had a bit of a technical <laughs> error during the break, and our hot plate has um, gone to... Gone crazy. It's gone. It's, it's gone, gone, basically. Yeah, it's gone so, crazy. what we're going to do instead is have a, have a chat about the book, sure. talk through some of the ingredients for the yeah. green shakshuka, which, by the way, smells amazing, what you had done so far, and 
luckily you were very prepared and there is a here's one Tonya made earlier oh, yeah. as well to chat about. Um, so first of all, the books, The Secret of Spice. Mm -hmm. Why spice? Because spices are full of micronutrients and it's a really easy way to just boost your diet mm -hmm. with lovely stuff. So uh, in this recipe, for example, we've got coriander and cumin. Um, coriander is rich in uh, thiacin. Cumin is an amazing blood sugar regulator. Um, all of them have essential minerals that we need in our diet. Mm -hmm. So it's just like putting a sprinkle of spice in is like, you know, taking another teaspoon of goodness. And it's just flavour, And flavour, yeah. you know, that's the thing, it's full of flavour. And you said earlier that mm. you suffer from breakfast kind of fed upness. I what get really bored, yeah, yes. breakfast fatigue. Be breakfast yes. fatigue, that's the proper <laughs> word. So something like this, which is yes. basically eggs, yes. that's all it is, it's eggs, and you, you have whatever you've got in the fridge. So in, in my recipe, I, I've got peppers and, um, you know, spring onions and peas and whatever, but you got whatever you've got in the fridge, you've mm. got carrots or courgettes or some broccoli, mm. you, you just do it with all of that. I love it because I make shakshika all the time, but I actually never think to put all this greenery in, I keep mine quite red, so I'll put in like yeah, a red pepper a, yeah. and a red, but so yeah. you don't use a tomato sauce at all for a No, I don't use a tomato so sauce. So what's your base? But the base the is the spinach, yeah. yeah. It's a kind of, it's a, you go, just put the spinach in, wilt it slightly, take it out and get rid of any excess water. Yeah. And that's my base. And normally I add spices, but really, um, it really is something that you go into the fridge and think, right, what have I got? And that's what you use. You shouldn't really use a recipe. No. You should just go for it. I mean, I also, I mean, I put a bit of feta on mine at the end. Always. But otherwise, you know, some harissa on top mm -hmm. as well. You know, just add what you've got Especially. at home. Just chuck it in the pan. For me, cooking is all about practicality. Mm -hmm. And it often doesn't look that pretty. Yes. But um, it tastes good and it's doing you good. Because I'm really greedy. I'm a piggy. <laughs> I like to eat. And so uh, my balance of that is if it's doing me good, then yeah. it's okay. You yeah, know, that's, that's, that, fine. that's fine. So that's the thing about the main thing. And luckily I did bring you in did. some muffins for we, you. We will get to oh, this. Sorry. Just, no, it's fine. I just oh, want sorry. to ask a bit more about the spices. So in terms of what one should have in their cupboard, the spices that you can go to to just chuck on anything. Okay, so what my advice is everyone, I know it's, everyone's so bored of it now, but if you look at my first book that was written Ooh, 21 years ago, wow. I, I talk about turmeric in that book. Okay, it's so it's a healer, color, isn't yeah, it? It's, yeah. it is, but it's not just a healer. It's 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 just a wonder food, and you know, start taking it in your teens because it will do you well by the time you're 60. Okay. It's anti-inflammatory. It aids your skin. It um, helps uh, bacteria be taken out of the body. It's good biome for your gut. It's just the best thing in the world, and I put it in everything. So I would normally put it in these eggs. Mm -hmm. um, if I am having one of those days where I think, gosh, what am I going to eat and where am I going to be? I do actually make myself a turmeric latte. Yeah, I just find them a bit, it tastes like you're drinking curry to me. That's See, my I, only issue with it. But I like it with coconut milk. Okay. So if you kind of, a, a half a teaspoon of turmeric, a tiny pinch of black pepper, because the black pepper, the pepper in the black pepper helps you absorb the turmeric. Turmeric's quite a difficult one to absorb. Mm. You know, so there's no point going and buying a capsule. It's just okay. not going to work. You need the actual powder. So you need black pepper to be present in order to to help you absorb it, you need it to be heated. It needs heat to release it. Is that right? And it needs the presence of fat. So a coconut milk or a full fat dairy milk or something that's got a bit of fat in it. Or even if you're having something that's like oatmeal that has no fat, put a dab of, bat dab of butter in it so and that'll help. Does that mean if you buy one of those shots that's like a ginger, lemon and turmeric, it's doing nothing for you because it's not been heated? Pretty much. That is really Pretty fascinating and that's quite my, pressing. That's my big problem with a lot of these kind of stores that say that they're good for your health. Mm. They have a lot of stuff in those stores that are really bad for your health. Things like, you know, no added sugar, but you look and there's rice syrup. That's, that's very, that. very yeah. bad for you. Yes, you know, rice, you know, so, because it's gone through a terrible process. A rice doesn't want a syrup. It doesn't want to become a sugar. Yeah, so yeah. in order to do that, it's really bad for you. So, you know, don't, just don't touch things like that. Sure. Go as close to nature as you can. And spices are uh, as close to nature. I like them, I like them raw. I like them fresh like coriander mm. I love lots of coriander or, or, or the coriander seeds are even better. You count that as a spice coriander yes hmm. oh yes because you can you can if you if you think of the herb yeah, but it's all part of the people part of the think of herbs being green so the coriander mm -hmm. that you buy fresh is is green yeah and the spice is the coriander seeds okay yeah, that so makes sense. but the whole of it so I, I count garlic as a spice okay interesting oh, it's all the good stuff really, yeah it's isn't all it? good stuff um, it is. so your past books and your tv series have all yeah. been about greek cypriot cooking a lot well. of it has been about greek right. food so, yeah and so what, what is it? obviously spice flavors but what is it about their food that makes it so good so healthy well the mediterranean diet has been proved it was proved in the 1970s actually it is actually the best diet for you mm -hmm. but what kind of makes me angry is when they did these studies in the 1970s they did them in crete so it's the greek 
diet, okay. actually, that everybody, the Italians, the French, everyone jumped into, sure. the Spanish, but it's actually the Greek diet. Got it's it. so good for you. It's very plant-based and it's just a very holistic, colourful, indigenous diet. Okay, and how, so how can we incorporate little bits of that into our diet day to day? So just, look, I mean, it's... It sounds boring, but think a rainbow. Eat a rainbow. Mm -hmm. Eat a rainbow. That really eat, is true, right? It's so true. Mm -hmm. Eat a rainbow. Make sure that you're not just eating beige food. Make sure there's lots of colour. What's red? Have you had something purple? You know, have you, what's green? What's yellow? Make mm -hmm. sure you have all of that in your diet. And um, when in doubt, add spice. Okay, noted. Um, all right, quickly, the spice, the secret of spice is the name of the new book. And I love what you've done. You basically, let's try and show everyone at home. This is what we were going to make. Yes, Maddie. it was. Um, but you run through all the different spices and, yeah. and the benefits of them. And then you add some recipes yeah. at the end. Um, so in terms of the benefits of cumin, you talked a bit about paprika we were going to put in the Yeah, paprika, paprika is very warming. Mm -hmm. It's a metabolizing spice. So it's ex incredibly good for you. Uh, coriander, which is the other dried one that we're mm -hmm. going to put into this one, is has uh, rich in vitamin C. Okay. So it's very good for you. It's got great minerals that are um, rich in calcium as well, so good for your bones. Mm -hmm. And the cumin is, it is one of the wonder spices. It's only a step down from turmeric in okay. what it can do for you. The way it regulates your blood sugar, the way it's anti-inflammatory, antibacterial. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just incredibly good for you and it tastes great. Oh, delicious, making my mouth water. Okay, so if it does come down, if we were to be making the shakshuka yeah. today, just talk us really quickly through what you would do. So you wilted the spinach. Wilted, wilted the spinach, take it out and get rid of any excess water that you've got. Then okay. back in the pan, add a little bit of oil and then add the peppers, the garlic and the chilli. Mm -hmm. um, and I like a lot of chilli. And it's, you know, you can use chilli powder or chilli flakes, sure. but if you've got fresh chilli, use that. Wilt them down, cook them down as, as best you can. Mm -hmm. Frozen peas are great, straight straight in from frozen. Again, I wouldn't think to just look in the freezer and add those things to a shakshuka or something right. like that. But I know it's cool, it's genius. All these added kind of nutrients, yeah. add those in. Um, and then you just make little mounds in mm -hmm. the little holes in, in your pan, crack the eggs in, mm -hmm. stick the lid on top, let it cook slightly through. Um, You've obviously added your spices whilst you were adding the peppers yeah. and everything. So you just mix it, it all in together. Mix it all in, sure. all in together. And the way I finish it off is I, I put a sprinkle of feta on top, sprinkle of dill on top, and there you go. Oh, delicious. Done. And actually, it doesn't just have to be a breakfast, does it? I no, it gosh, I, I have it. Yeah, I've yeah. all the time. Yeah, great, so and that really little bread dinner. is looking very tempting as yeah. well with it. Um, okay, and then the other. Am I right in thinking this other recipe is for the muffins? That you yes. Mentioned? So I'm going to open up one of these. I'm going to just show you. Go one for of these it. Muffins. This is your fig and orange muffins. These are fig and orange muffins, but in them they. They also have um, clove and turmeric, and they have this amazing spice called I mastiki. I, I my, my scent, my nose is not is playing up today, but have, it smells amazing. I can I'm going to have to get you to have a little try. Oh, I will. Don't you worry. And I'll and mastiki is a is a spice that's really really unusual because it comes from a pine tree resin, and it's it comes in particular from a particular island in Greece called Chios. Okay. And they kind of score the trees and um, they call them mastiki tears because the resin comes out of the tree. Wow. This resin has cured people that have ulcers mm. in their stomach. It's unbelievable. And they've been doing these tests on people now. And instead of giving them all these kind of terrible drugs that they give them and antiacids and all this stuff, they've just got them to chew this gum. And they've chewed this gum for a six week, six week period and their ulcers have shrunk. It has over 70 uh, essential compounds in it. And mm. you can buy it now. You buy it from health food store. They have ground mastiki. Mastiki. How do you spell it? M-A-S-T-I-C. Okay. All oh, right. Okay. And you can buy that. And that's a great one. If you if you suffer from any kind of um, indigestion problems or anxiety in your tummy mm. or anything that causes reflux or anything that gives you an upset or bloating, mm. this is a great spice for calming that right down. Amazing. And it's so, the, I mean, it tastes like health. Yeah. Like, it, it tastes so healthy. God, it's delicious. Oh, I mean, it's good. It does, yeah. it does. I'm going to let everybody else in the in the team have some in a minute. Thank good. you so much. No, I'm pleasure. so sorry that we Mind. couldn't, we Next couldn't time. cook. Next time. Next yeah, we'll time. definitely have to have you back. And if you do want to, I'm sure we can put the recipe online, um, but the book obviously will be linked in the show notes below. So Thank you. Don't worry if, um, if you are missing that. Um, okay, well, Tonya, thanks for joining us Appreciate so you. much. Um, and do have a look in the show notes below for uh, for the book, and all, we'll put all your other books in there as well. Um, thank you also to the Sherlock's ladies. We'll be back next week with an interiors special where we'll be putting your questions to the experts. Until then, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and tell your friends. Bye bye. <laughs>